What's good? This is your boy DJ Break Records. I want to give a shout out to DME TV. We going live on this right now. I need y'all to listen. 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 This shit is real. How long you been in the DJing game, bro? To be honest with you, I mean, I've been I've been DJing now for about six months. I ain't been DJing a long time. Uh, about six months. Kind of moved up fast, but six months. I've been like the number one host in South Carolina as far as the hype man is concerned. And rapping and as an artist. But DJ and this has been five months. Okay. So how long you been rapping previous to 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 hopping onto the DJ? I mean, that's like, I've, I mean, I've been rapping for years. I'm talking about, I've been rapping since 19, I say 94, when I came home. Yeah. I came from jail. I did five years. I went in, I went in 88 and I came home in 94. And then I was writing rhymes and trying to learn how to rap. And then finally I got around. The, the dudes like Kane and all these dudes, uh, Jay Z, uh, Jazzo, they, these are my friends. I got around them, Sauce Money, all the ones. We was all part of that Notion Ave thing and stuff, rapping back in the day, Marcy Project thing. So we we all used to meet up at Eastern District High School and play basketball. They used to call me Slow Motion, and other ones would call me Light, whatever they had nicknames back because I was slow, but my moves were slick. You know what I'm saying? So we used to, we used to do that, and everybody go in the studio and come out with their with they tapes. That's when he's rapping on that tapes and two inch reels and one inch reels. See, nobody don't know about that. That's when you had the, the analog sound. It was different. Now everything is all digital. You can cheat now. You can punch <laughs> in now. Back then you had to know your verse by heart and go in there and do it. So with the transition from being an artist to DJ and how, what's that, what's that evolution been like for you? Well, so far it's been smooth. I mean, the only thing, the only thing different is you standing in one spot all night. That's the main thing. Um, you controlling the music, and you know you basically gotta know other people's music. Before it was just all about me knowing mine and getting on yeah. stage and performing. It's different. It's something, and and the fact that I was always a good host, it made it kind of easier because I used to work with the DJs. And my boy B Ready told me that I had great song selection, so I used to come back and forth to him and be like, "Yo, put this on, put this on, watch what happened, this one." So I figured with this great song selection talent that I had and the fact that, you know, just buying the stuff you needed, practicing in the house, I said, let me, let me get into it. But everybody knows if I ever get into something, I take it serious. I go 100 with it. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. So now I'm a, I'm a straight converted DJ. And it's, um, it's kind of weird because when I named myself DJ Break Records, that's where the drama came in. Yeah. Because I named myself something, it's an action word, something that DJs are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Break records. Yeah. And I remember the day when I put it up on Facebook, I got certain DJs, even on Inst even on Instagram doing videos like who this nigga gonna call this up break records. Like he's doing like he breaking records. Nigga, we've been we've been breaking records. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, the name is hard. The name will never die. Yeah. DJ yeah. break records. If you're gonna get into something, you wanna try to be the best at it, right? Exactly. So I had to grab the best name. And then when I Googled it, this is the thing that got me. When I Googled it and I found out I'm the only one in the entire world with that name. Can't lose. I, I pulled myself up on Google and all you seen was me. Nobody else. So I'm the original and only first DJ Break Records. That representing South Carolina. I see. So how you feel, how, being a DJ in the Met right now, Columbia, how do you feel about the nightlife, the turnouts, the... The whole atmosphere of the club scene right now in, in, in the metro. Well, the, the club scene got better than where it used to be because when I came down here in 2007, the club scene was cool, it was jumping, but as far as the artists was concerned, it was it was a lot of things that were going on that wasn't good that inside the club scene. Like they would have open open mic events and you know pull their artists out and open mic events and you know basically at the end of the day their artists would win the events because the events were rigged. Yeah. Stuff like that, or they will have an open mic, and it's a contest. You you tell a person the winner within the next four weeks is going to win this, but they were adding people into the contest every week instead of just taking the first batch yeah. and then you break them down slowly into the final. You get a winner, and then the week like contest supposed to go even on television. Yeah. So a lot of them things were rigged. 
But as far as the club scene itself, the club scene has always been good to me because I was a hype man. I was the party. I was the one that came in there. When they see me come in, oh, here come, here come, they call me Killer Ben. Yeah. Here come Killer Ben. He's going to turn it up. Blah, blah, blah. So it was always good. And the only problem I got with it, this is the main problem, is safety. Yeah. The club scenes now have not have not lived up to their their goal as far as keeping customers safe. Yeah, yeah. As you know in the news, a lot of things have been happening. People's been getting killed, people are getting shot, a lot of these venues. And the the customer safety is more important than anything. You know, you can come out there and party all you want, but you want to go home safe. That's one of the main reasons why you know, said I kind of attach myself to, to uh, sensations because that club has been open for four years and haven't and hasn't had one incident in four years. Yeah. I like the way they deal with safety. It doesn't matter about the clientele you bring in, as long as the people are safe, people will come to to, to your venue. Yeah, that's the only problem I got with the nightlife now. Safety, safety is a big issue. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going into what other dudes do as far as in their clubs. That's their business. Yeah. but safety is the key right now. So with all the up and coming artists in the city, who do you have your your, your eyes on that, that you really like to push and want to see them succeed out there in this music business? Well, I got artists signed to me, mm -hmm. right? The one artist that I, that's, that's loyal to me, and he, he I know he's gonna blow. I, I got a lot of love for him, and that's that's my artist, Young Bell. Young Bell's been with me for two years, almost mm -hmm. going three years. I knew him longer than that. But as an artist, he's been with me for two years. And I had um, a group called Bam Squad. We were like, we were tearing up everything. Bam Squad is, was a unique group. Everybody was calling them the um, the new Wu-Tang. Yeah. Because of the different styles they had and all the brothers and one thing. Bam Squad, I got love for them. But as far as what I see right now, Young Bell, Meek Bands, uh, Stupid Money Stutter, Jew on the Beat, Stu, uh, uh, Stu Montana. I hope I, he always get on me when I say his name wrong. Stu Montana, and um, uh, it's a few more out there. Uh, Carolina Moolah. Um, it's a few more out there. That's that. I, I mean, did that actually? Did I actually keep in rotation and play? Oh, CT, uh, CT, CT. I like CT, and um, also Blaze. Blaze that um he he messes with this girl named um her company Cody Weaver, she she's out in Camden. Blaze, it's a few. And then my thing is, I like the artists that's working. So the ones I named, I know for a fact is pushing and working. Now, the ones and those are also the ones that connect with me because there are a lot of artists out there that don't connect with me. You know what I'm saying? They 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 already in their mode doing what they do. You know what I'm saying? But as far as the ones that I see every day, that I know, that I'm playing, that I'm in the clubs watching, that I know is going to do the thing, is the ones I just mentioned. So tell us how important it is for the artist to connect with the DJ. It's very important. Um, uh, to have an organic relationship is the best thing in the world with a DJ. See, w one of the things I want to say, because I, I didn't mention also, I got two other artists. I'm going to mention Strizzy and I'm going to mention Tip Smalls. Cause they support me. That's one of the things I like. Whenever, whenever, whenever you, I see you on Facebook and, and you give me shout outs, I know for a fact that there's a connection there. That's important because I'm definitely giving you shout outs. Whether I'm playing your shit live on Facebook, in the clubs, or or, or, I, or I'll, I'll I'll do like a, a video flyer or something and I'll attach your music to it, yeah. stuff like that, so that people can still hear your stuff. Either way, I'm pushing it. And also, uh, YP YPJ Grams out of Charleston. Yeah, I gotta shout him out. He got a song. He got a song, man. That's killing me. Called another one. I like that motherfucker. But I got, I got so it's, it's, it's those artists. It's like it's like I got nine artists that I I'm organically connected with that I push, and it feels good because I was an artist. Yeah. I see what's in them, and I really messed them up. When we went to Atlanta and I performed because a lot of them didn't know I really rapped. Yeah, they yeah. was like, this dude really can fucking rap. I said, yeah, but. I'm I'm really for the rappers. I yeah, want I yeah. want the rappers to jump, and I'm praying. This the only thing I'm praying. Somebody jump. Don't forget it, brother. Man. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's you know what like on my side of town like you know the DJs. I I guess they got they got artists that they fuck with, but you don't see them like really setting up showcases or like 
really trying to put them on like that. You know, like, I really don't even hear them spend their music in rotation in the clubs when I go. Like, it's just mainstream music. Like, you don't hear a, a mix-up or none of that, and you, like, only... Like one of the only DJs I really know that do that, you know what I mean? So that's pretty, that's pretty major in itself. Because they, because of this, the, the art of breaking the record, see. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to throw stones. Yeah. But a lot of the DJs now just come, just are this there ready to get the money out of the clubs. As far as the the whole reason for becoming a DJ to play what's hot and to break new stuff, a lot of them fell back from it. And if they are breaking records, they're breaking records that's been broke already somewhere. Yeah. And Give you an example. Grandmaster Flash was the first dude to take a turntable and turn it into an instrument. Right? He was the first dude to put a rapper on beats. He had something called the the, the, the six bar, four bar to six bar uh, technique where you drop four beats, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, come back, one, two, five, six. That's how the records would spin back and forth. Yeah. Six swipes. Y'all see how he drew the crayon on it and did it and stuff like that? He had to teach Cowboy how to rap on the beat. Because back then, nobody knew how to rap on a beat. Yeah. So the DJ became the leader. Yeah. He was the one that guided the artist. The artist looked like the leader on the stage, but it was really the DJ. Mm -hmm. That's the role I take. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be the leader to guide the artist in there. So that way, when the artists go ahead and, and, and get on and do their thing, the comfortability of having a real DJ behind them making their shows great, yeah. you done brought that back. It's no more just um, go play my music on a CD, not go on stage. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you need the DJs to um, play the music. You need the DJs to push the records and stuff like that. Especially here in South Carolina because the radio stations don't give them that much airplay. Pretty much. So, what's left? You, you got the streets and the clubs. Yeah. And the ones that are controlling it are us. So I have to get into that role of playing the music and being organic with the artists where when they're not there, I still play it. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's something, that's that right there, you know what I'm saying, that's golden. Because cats, some some cats want you to pay them just to play. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, when you leave and, and, and that night over with, it's done with. You know what I mean? Like, they ain't gonna ever play a song again. You, you, so see, last, like, you see, last night I played, uh, 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 Stupid Money Stutters record, light yeah. up, right? I was changing it back and forth the way I was doing it. Yeah. They were dancing to it. Nobody knew that was his record. Mm -hmm. But they was turning up to it. Yeah. That's the key to it. Talking over the record, telling everybody how hot it is. Yeah. And yeah. keeping it moving. When you doing that, you create a relationship with the fans and the record. So when they go back and try to check for it, they gonna come back to you and ask you, yo, where you get that record from? Right. Who record yeah. was that? Now you tell them. Now, now they got another person liking their stuff, and then word of mouth after that is the best thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, you gotta check this dude, uh, Meat Band's tenth grade record, or uh, Stupid Money Stutters Light It Up record. Man, you got this shit is hot. You gotta check that shit, and and that's what I'm trying. That's what that's what I'm I'm trying to do, and it's kind of hard in a way because I don't really got I don't really have no 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 other DJs supporting me, but um, be ready, and maybe it's basically. Um, about it. Um, DJ Ty, because I see Ty start to do some of the stuff now. A few other, uh, few other DJs I don't know about, but I don't really see it like that. And it's like, it's oh DJ Bam, I want to shout him out because Bam will play your shit. Feel me, but you know I don't really see too many that. Do. Oh, my nigga Shy, I can't forget Shy, Shy Strip Club King. I call him Strip Club King on the DJ tip. Shy, Shy, break, he plays local artists. Stuff like that. You just you just gotta be organic with him. So with that being said, for DJs coming up in or outside of the map in South Carolina, like what would, what would be your advice to them to change the the course of DJing? I guess to say you know C create create the fan base. Create yeah you know what I'm saying like yeah change the wave. The way, yeah. I would I would suggest this, and this is some this is as real as I can put it. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. You in this for what? Are you in it for the money, or are you in it to play what's hot, or, and, and you know change things? Yeah. Because the art of music is change. Back then, when music was being put into play, music changed the condition of people. Mm -hmm. You know, like we was talking about earlier, the R and B singers need to come back with that relationship, that love music, that good R and B, instead of always disrespecting women and doing all this crazy stuff. So, 
the DJ, I, I look at it like if you're going to come into this thing, you need to be 100 with yourself. Do it for the culture first because the money's going to come. Yeah. And then oh, build a relationship. Don't be afraid to play something new. And try to figure out a way to get it in there where people can still dance. Yeah. The, the people, what DJs don't understand is that the people really believe them. They listen to them. Right. If the DJ says hi, it's hot. But if you, it goes with this too, because see, there's a thing where artists don't know how to approach DJs. That's cool. But that shit is done. We, I, artists have really understood now you can't come to DJs on no dumb shit. Yeah. I, I had a few of them that drive me like that, and I didn't, I didn't say what I had to say to them in the whole nine. But you have to come to the DJ a certain way. And then when they come to you that way, I mean, take the record. Play the record. Yeah. Listen to it, see what it does. Play it. And, and like my little technique is this. You can't say a record is hot and if you don't see nobody moving to it. Yeah, yeah. If people move to the record, then it's hot. Yeah. Not, you, not the artist saying, man, this shit hot. Of course you're going to say it, but when it boils down to it, the, if the fans are not moving to the shit, or the people in the club are not jumping to it, it's not hot. Yeah. You yeah. got to bring me something else. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't get discouraged. Because it, I, it might be the time or era or the type of music that's being played. I got to put something in to go with that shit. Mm -hmm. Or it might be the fact that your, your record stops the flow of what's going on. And I have to figure out a way to get it in there. Yeah. But DJs have to not be afraid to do that. And also, keep your business right. You know what I'm saying? Stick to your price. If you, if you got a price, stick to it. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to waver and do favors and stuff like that, all that is cool, but you but you gotta make sure when you're doing these favors that you that you uh you limit how long you take it. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. and, and also try to find uh venues that are safe to work in. More than anything, because I'm gonna tell you something. When you gotta pack that stuff up and leave, man, you don't want no you don't you don't wanna go through no issues, somebody outside doing something stupid or anything like that or you're going through anything. And then and then if you stick to your terms as a business person, if you say that this is what you're not going to do anymore, don't do it no more. Because it's a business. It's more, more than anything. Yeah. Besides your skills and all that. And stay stay on and stay on social media. That's what I would suggest to any, any DJ coming in. And y'all need to learn how to talk on the mic. That's a big problem. That's why you got about 30,000 people want to host. Because DJs don't know how to talk on the mic no more. And, and ain't no more kick and freeze. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of talking on the mic. That's, yeah. That was part of DJing. That's right. The microphone. What happened to it? Y'all just stopped? Y'all just tried to say, fuck it, I'm just going to play the records? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the promoters and the that's promoting the club scenes and your showcases that's going on around the city? That's a, that's a special question. Because lately I've been on Facebook um, basically saying how promoters are supposed to have a budget for the overhead. This is this is what I feel. I'm not gonna get into no specific promoter, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you what a promoter is supposed to do. Whenever you get into this business of promotion, the first thing you're supposed to have is money. You gotta have money, man. You gotta have money for overhead. You gotta be able to pay your DJ and your security. If your parties become a flop. You take the L, but you paid your overhead. That's how you got guys like uh, Ben Hated, Chris Kazina, um, Boom, Jock Hustle, Nutso. These guys, that's how these guys survive. And these guys are big because they pay, the, they pay people. And prime example, we had, a, uh, we had an event about two weeks ago on a Friday in Sensations, right? Uh, Jock Hustle hired me for the first time d to DJ one of his events. And he got into a car accident, from what I know. I got hurt. He's, from what I hear, he's, he's still recovering from it. And I hope, he get, I hope he gets better. He still made sure that the guy that was there booming him paid me. The party didn't go good because people didn't want to come out because they felt bad about what happened to him. So they didn't come out. But he still paid me. See these guys, these guys, you know when you work with them that you ain't got to worry about your money. So as and then promoters need to uh, need to do this too. 
See, there's been a thing going on that I've been part of uh, scams as far as open mics are concerned, stuff like that, because I've been the, like, I'm like the elected DJ for the artists. But at the same time, what nobody's understanding is I'm the DJ being hired. I'm not the promoter. Whatever events they got going on, they're paying me for a service so I can pay my bills. I do... I do support the artists, and I do mo I do all the flyers for every event that I do. When they call me and hire me, they, they say, can you make a flyer? Because I make my own flyers for my events because I like to promote myself. And sometimes it looks like because I'm making these flyers, and they come in, they drop on my page first that they're my events. They're not. Those events belong to the promoters that, I, that I'm working for at that time. They're paying me to, to be a DJ. So whatever goes on, I have nothing to do with them. I just wish that promoters, if they are doing anything, shysty, they correct that problem because it's, it's, uh, people like me, we taking the fall for that and while they staying in the shadows. You know what I'm saying? That's my only issue and getting budgets. Let me, t let me tell you, promoters now in South Carolina, this is what's going on with that. They're, they're now charging the clubs to um, have them come in and promote their clubs because they can pull a fan base. I can understand that hustle because they, got, they can pack a club. And they get in the door. Now, you got you got promoters who don't really pack clubs like that and don't have fan bases like that, and they're getting the, they're getting the door for free, and um, just chilling back, you know, doing semi grinding and stuff like that. Some go hard, some do they grind in the inboxes. They don't do it on social media. They talk directly with people. They get them out there, but then at the end of the night, it's always a problem with the money. This is because the budget needs to be had at the beginning. You have to have that budget. I suggest it to I suggest the clubs, period. This is what you should do. And this is for a DJ to get paid. All DJs gonna go along with this right here. Charge everybody who wants that door. Charge them about three hundred dollars. That way you have the DJ fee and security fee. Something to have a security mm -hmm. to pay the overhead. That way, especially if you have an in-house DJ, that way. That way, there's no issues at the end of the night when it comes to money, and and then the business structure is is, is maintained that way, and that also will push the promoters to work hard to pack these clubs and stuff like that. Cause it's, it had to be a reason these guys who were already popping doing it are where they at. They I know they paid to get the clubs sometime to get in there and do it, and they had to work hard. Now that they established organic fans. You no, know, they can go and say, you gonna, yo, listen, you want me to do your club? You pay me 500 and I'll do your club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to get some of that door. Get that door, too, because they know. They, they push that button, everybody coming. And the party's going to be a success. Everybody's going home, and that's the end of that. So in order to be a good promoter, you got to get that budget right. Make sure you can pay your overhead. Make sure you promote good. And you have to leap out there and take, make some sacrifices. And all this, all this comes to one thing, having money. You don't have the money, then at least if you got the fans, the organic people that come in there with you to party, if you can get that going, that 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 a substitute to help you because now you can pay out your overhead and stuff if you if you relying on the door. Yeah. Like a lot of these open mics taking too long for people to perform. You know, you waiting to pack that door because you don't have the overhead money to pay pay out who you got to pay. You need the door to help you to pay. It. Yeah. So, but if you have the overhead already, you can start the shows earlier. 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whoever coming in after this, get down with it. You miss it, you miss it. You done made some money, you paid your overhead, and that's it. But what, what a lot of them are doing is waiting until the door, the place get packed. Now, you done sit in the club from 9 o'clock till about almost 12, 1 o'clock, and you start rapping, or you start performing, or the, this start happening, mm -hmm. and that start happening. You can't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, but if you had the overhead, you kill all that. That's, my, that's, that's what I suggest for promoters getting into the game and promoters now. And um, it's the truth. And like, like God says, he says, speak the truth even if, be, even if it be against yourself. He says, speak a language that people understand. And that's just what it is. And he said, fame when you try to deceive him and those who believe. And surely you only deceive yourselves and know not. That's wisdom for you right there. He's God is telling you to be real with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't, if you get into this business, understand what you got to do. Yeah. You know, because everybody got families. We all got situations. 
Nobody, I don't, I don't prioritize my situation over another person until I feel like they not, take, they don't care about mine. That's when I do it. Otherwise, I, I care about everybody's situation. Man. It is, it is. That's, I, I'm a big supporter. Nobody can say I don't support people. But, but. So with that being said, you got any shout outs you want to give out right there to the city man before we get out of here? Yeah, I want to shout out DM, DME TV. You know what I'm saying? I got to shout y'all out first before anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Because right. y'all came out and they came to my house out here in Gasson. You know, chilling, dealing with my dog. My dog about to do, act stupid up in here. I had to put her in the corner. She, she a killer now. Don't come up in here with that mess now. And, and uh, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to God, first of all, more than anything. Because I'm, not, you know, let me tell y'all something funny before we go further. You ever see these rappers get on there and be talking all this, I'm going to kill you. I sold 20 keys in the West Indies and all that. And after they say, I want to thank God for these lyrics. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you saying all this crazy stuff. When it comes to something positive, I always like to add God to it. This is positive. I want to, I want to give a shout out to God. You know what I'm saying? He, he's helping me out. He's helping y'all be here. And he's he's the author of time. He controls everything. Not one leaf will fall off a tree without his permission. That's why y'all here. You know what I'm saying? And then I want to give a shout out to um, everybody that supports me, all the artists, uh, my wife, my family, my, my dad, everybody that supports me, my friends. Uh, Muslim brothers that support me, all my large brothers on the square, I'm going to give a shout out to all y'all. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Lamont, and I want to give a shout out to Sensations, Earl Cooper from um, Two Notch Barn Grill. I want to give a shout out to my man Bud and everybody over at uh, Mo Bay's. Um, everybody that fuck with me, period, as far as doing this uh, doing this thing. And also, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm, 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 this, is, this is the type of person I am. I'm going to give a shout out to Strong Arm, ENT, because... To be honest with you, they it took me first and started putting me in clubs when I got into this thing to get me jumping. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna give a shout out to Strong Arm ENT. I'm gonna give a shout out to Greg Grizz. Greg Grizz helped me out a lot with certain things. And um, Tito South, my um, Lil Bo from Headhunters, because he supported me a lot. He gave me he gave me my first shout over in, in Indulgence. And when Elements Two opened up, I cracked the door for that DJ. And stuff. So the ones that helped me out, I'm with y'all. Can't forget Whitney. Can't forget the bartenders and sensations. <laughs> I'll do that. They jump on my behind. And all the artists that mess me, Young Bell, everybody, and um, that's just what it is. And, and, and um, most of most of all, Meek Bands. I'm gonna shout Meek Bands because one thing I say about them, Meek Bands has like and Drew on the beat and Stutter. Those guys, they have been. Tight with me. Stewie just start rocking with me hard, but I'm, I, I fuck with him like that. But those are my shout outs to everybody out there and stuff like that. And I just, that's just, just what it is. I can, I, and I, oh, yeah, I, damn, my nigga, my nigga, be ready. God, what's wrong with me? That's the one that brought me into the DJ game. God yeah. damn, party pack DJ. That's right. In effect, I'm also a core DJ. That's right, core DJ. Shout out to core DJs, party pack DJs, Tutu, all, all, all the ones that. That, that said, yo, you really gonna do this shit? Do it. But be ready. He gave, and I'm gonna tell y'all this. My DJ case cost me $400. $400, right? He gave me the case. I ain't paid one dime for it. He said, take this. That's right. He said, he said, he said you my friend. That's my, be ready my best friend. And my boy, Philip Jones. Those are my, those are like, those are my, the type of me. And, and, oh yeah, Boss Money. If I don't say this, I don't say him, it's gonna be a problem. He always next to me in the club. Boss Money, Boss Fan Records, my man, William, William Hampton. And he, um, um, Boss Fan Records, I mean. That's what I'm gonna say, Boss Fan Records. They, um, when, when, he, when he gave me the case, he said, he don't want me going inside a club, because I went inside a club with my turntables in the box. You pull out the turntables. Yeah, yeah. He said, man, you looking real crazy. I was putting the turntables on the box. He said, man, come on, come to the house. He came to the house, he said, man, take this, boom. He, this cost me $400, and I picked it up, trust me. That shit heavy as hell, it, co yeah. it cost that. He set me right in, he showed me everything about DJing. And um, if it wasn't for Be Ready giving me that push and letting me be his host all these years, I wouldn't be doing it, real talk. All right, that's what I, and also I want to shout out Nick Pease. One of the, Nick Pease, Peasy, one of the best producers I know out here in the game doing this thing. And Sam be mixing it all, y'all. Y'all all with y'all all stay with me rocking out. You know what I'm saying? And, and I know y'all gonna make it. And I got y'all back. You know, and I play his strap record too. I meant to mention his strap record is hot. He need to do that damn strap record. Tell him that shit. That's what I'm talking about, baby. It's your boy DJ Break Records. 
We out this motherfucker. I just don't take records, nigga. Guess what? I break records. You know how we doing this? That way.